Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Orphan Last, a.k.a. Skylar Madison. And today, although I'm going to be having an illustration on the screen and everything while you listen to me talk, uh, I am going to be discussing something that's not related to the illustration. There may be a little bit of extra time where I might be able to discuss a few things with the illustration process and such like that, but there's a number of things on my mind that I would like to get off my chest and kind of discuss. So first and foremost, I've been on YouTube for five years. Throughout that five-year period of time, most of it, I have been providing content, tutorials, and speed paintings and such like that for free. And uh, I, I love doing this. Uh, you know, I would do this for free because I have done this for free. But the thing is, is I, there does come a point where I need to actually start making money. Now, 2020 is the first year where I have actually, throughout the entire year, been receiving ad revenue off of YouTube, which is awesome. It is an achievement, and I, I'm so grateful that there's enough people that are interested in my content so that, I, you know, I've come to this point to where, yes, I am actually making a little bit of money, which is $30 a month, which, again, not not to sound ungrateful because I am. I am grateful. I love the fact that uh, people love my content enough for me to make $30 a month, but the thing is, is that'll pay one small bill, not quite a cell phone bill, definitely not the rent. So there's going to be a number of things that are going to be changing on my channel. I, I, I'm going to be looking for more ways to make money online, okay? And so th some of this will kind of influence a little bit of my content in that uh, sometimes my uh, videos will get interrupted with... We interrupt your regular scheduled programming in order to provide you this public service announcement. Did you know that every day that Orphan Last's merchandise is not purchased, 30 baby gingerbread men die? You're a monster! No, she's married to the Muffin Man. That doesn't make sense! Researchers say that by the end of 2020, there will be no more baby gingerbread men. So be sure to pick up yours now! And if you find yourself watching this content on a regular basis, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Little advertisements. And the primary reason is just simply because even though I have merchandise, uh, having merchandise won't do you any good if no one even knows that it even exists to begin with. They won't, like, no one's going to buy it. You know, I, I would love to make the little advertisements for the merchandise that I have to be more entertaining than what you see other content creators providing, kind of like what you just saw just now. A little bit zany, a little bit obnoxious, a little bit fun, you know, that sort of thing. I, I would love to do that, but it's not always possible, I guess, is kind of what I'm saying, in that this seems like a, a no-duh sort of statement, but y you might not actually realize this and until I actually mention it. This image that you're watching me draw on the screen right now took me six hours to illustrate. And then on top of that, I had to illustrate the 1950s version of my mascot. I had to illustrate the bad guy with the gun, and I had to illustrate the gingerbread man. Then I had to hunt down Creative Commons sound effects, and then I had to put it all together, try to figure out how to enter all of that into the regular, you know, editing process that I already have, and trying to do that on a weekly basis, because that's something that I would like to do, but I just don't, I just don't, simply don't have the time to do that. Come up with a new skit every single week, and it would be awesome if I could make it so that, you know, subscribers, viewers, they might look forward to what weird new zany skit I might have for my next video, uh, suggesting that that people uh, check out my merchandise and such like that, rather than having it be uh, just like everybody else's little thing that they do where they interrupt their content saying, hey, yeah, you know, if you like my content, like, share, and subscribe. By the way, I have merchandise, you know, all of that. Um, rather than interrupting it in a way where you just feel like skipping it in every single one of their videos, uh, having it be something that's a little bit more entertaining to the point to where people look forward to and enjoy it. I would love to make it like that. It's just the, uh, the time it takes to create all of the assets. It's not all too practical. And th this video right here is kind of the uh, prototype for that approach to letting you guys know that, yes, I have merchandise. And th the thing is, is even though I mentioned that I have merchandise and such like that at the end of my videos, uh, most people don't watch till the end of my videos. And most people, by the time that the video ends, they're not really listening to what, you're, what the, the content creator is saying at that moment in time 
time as the video was wrapping up. And so I, I think that the lion's share of my viewers are not aware that I have t-shirts and such like that or haven't been aware of that. And it's been that way for a little while. And so basically what, I, what this video is all about is, uh, I guess uh, just saying things are going to change. I'm looking for new ways to make money online with my artwork. And uh, because it, things have to change, really, they, they really have to change. My situation uh, really sucks. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be talking about a few things that I, I guess I've mentioned before in the past, uh, but I'm going to elaborate a few more details that some people may not have known because simply, I mean, these these are things that aren't easy to talk about for me. You know, in, in December of 2008, I got into an ATV accident and I broke a lot of bones. I broke my femur on my right arm um, and like both the radius and ulna, it's a, it was a horrible break. I wound up actually getting pins inside of my arm. Uh, I broke four ribs. I punctured a lung. Uh, I broke my femur right next to the ball joint. That in and of itself got a rod placed into my uh, femur and I fractured my spine. Okay, so that in and of itself is basically an indication that my body has a shelf life. And uh, throughout a, a number of years after the ATV accident, I, I tried to find work doing something other than, you know, where my work experience is. But the economy was really bad, and so the only work that I could find was either inside of a calling center or inside of uh, fast food. And, uh, like, none of this stuff paid well enough for me to really survive and even still I'm kind of at that stage where I'm not really getting paid well enough to really survive. Basically I've had to go back to doing construction work and I've been doing that and my body's got this shelf life. My body is this ticking time bomb where eventually I'm not going to be able to get the work that I have the most experience in and so I need to transition out of construction work and into the art field and uh, within the last year uh, some things that I've noticed is that during the winter uh, I, I'm experiencing some pains that I've never had that I've never experienced before specifically my right hand uh, sometimes my entire arm goes numb and like I can't really bend my fingers with my right arm throughout the winter when it starts getting cold and so I'm not like I'm both handed so I'm, I'm not able to really draw with my right hand during the winter at all uh, sometimes I use it as a fallback but most of the time I'm drawing with my left hand so it doesn't really influence my digital artwork all that much but my left hand if you guys recall during the Noble Frugal studio collaboration I mentioned that I broke my hand midway through the process of illustrating that image. What it was was one of my carpals inside of my hand. It, it broke and uh, so I had my arm inside of a cast. They treated it like a broken uh, you know a full-on broken arm or broken hand and um, you know uh, things seemed to heal up pretty well but within the next couple of years what I've started to notice is a type of pain has started to develop. It's as if one of the carpals inside of my hand is just slightly misshapen and so it just it makes it really difficult to really uh, do what I love uh, during the winter and, and providing content for you guys. And with me doing construction work, I mean, doing all this heavy lifting and all of that all the time. And um, I, I don't know if that's necessarily always good for my hands. I mean, it's kind of a given that, you know, the construction field of work is inherently a little bit more dangerous than most jobs, you know, especially if you're comparing it to sitting there in a cubicle or sitting there in an art studio drawing a picture. And so the more I get injured, the, the less likely it's going to be that I'm going to be an artist or be able to really do anything. I need to get out of the construction field. I really do. I have to. My situation is not just physical. So far, that's the only thing that I've really shared with you guys. My situation extends extends much further than that. After my a ATV accident and everything with all the injuries that I've sustained, even inside of the construction industry, even though it's the best paying job that I can seem to find because that's what I have the experience in, uh, people aren't re really all that eager to pay the guy that got injured a long time ago and is nearly a liability, I guess. They're not wi willing to pay that guy very much money. And so shortly after I started my YouTube channel, I started my YouTube channel because I was an actually 
a, a really toxic relationship. And, uh, you know, I, I just kind of was coming home from work every single day playing video games and just wasting my life with work and, and then video games, work and then video games, just trying to escape everything. And uh, one day it just occurred to me uh, instead of this, you know, here I just finished having this horrible argument with this girl that I was with at the time. And uh, I was just thinking, you know, I used to have hopes and dreams. What the hell happened to all of that? And so, you know, I actually wound up watching, uh, the channel was Draw with Jazza at the time, and I kept watching his content and thinking, I can do that, I can do that, I can do all of that, and it, it kind of gave me hope, and so I, you know, I started up my channel and thinking, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe I might have some direction here, maybe I'm not gonna wind up dead in a gutter somewhere or something like that at age 45 or something, I don't know, because uh, uh, ever since my ATV accident, that's kind of... That's kind of how I've envisioned my future. Just wondering, uh, whoa, what in the hell can I do? How, how do I get myself out of this situation? And um, shortly after I started my YouTube channel, uh, that relationship wound up falling through. It just didn't work out. And things snowballed to the point to where I was actually living inside of a shed there for a little while. And there are some people that were willing to help me out. And... Uh, give me a, a little bit of a better living environment. It's not great, but it's, you know, it's, it sure beats a shed. So although my living conditions have improved, my financial situation hasn't. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and sometimes it's a rat-eat-rat -rat world. And as much as I might want to be above that fray and everything like that, trying to scratch and crawl for a better route, a better alternative, some other way than participating in the dog-eating and rat-eating contest, I guess. I, I can only tell these people that are willing to help me to hold out for only so long. And I just, they know how talented I am. They know how skilled I am. And I, I really thought that I would have close to 10,000 subscribers at this point. You know, don't take this as being ungrateful or anything because I am grateful. 5,000 subscribers, 5,000, like 5,000 people that are fans of my artwork. That's, that's amazing. Like if I, if I could talk to my eight year old self and tell myself, Hey, when you become an adult, you're going to have 5,000 fans of your work. I think I would have been excited and looking forward to the future. But I keep telling these people that are willing to help me to just hold out just a little bit longer. Just a little bit longer, please. And I, I can't stress how much eternal gratitude I have for the help that I've received throughout these years. Not just from my subscribers, but from the people that I know personally that are interacting with me on a regular basis. And I guess also some of what I'm saying is is also like if you are a freelance artist and you would like to team up with me and show me the ropes in some way, I would love to, to get some sort of direction from somebody. I would love to, to learn. I mean, I, I'm, I do pick up commissions every once in a while. But I'm not all that experienced with finding work with my artwork. Uh, I'm not very experienced with the bidding process. So far, it's just been kind of like uh, some guy wants some banner for his Twitter account and he's willing to pay me like 50 bucks or something like that or 60 or 70, which, you know, it's it's nice having the extra 50, 60 or 70 bucks. But, uh, you know, if some like if I could find more consistent work and bigger jobs or something like that, that would be more more ideal, I guess. But then again, I don't really necessarily expect people to show me the ropes. I mean, that would be kind of a dream come true if someone did show up kind of out of the blue to kind of help me out and uh, kind of trying me trying to make it kind of like a mutual beneficial sort of situation in, in some sort of way. Um, one thing that has been on my mind throughout all of 2020, I, I didn't think it was going to be 2020, like all of the year, but it, it wound up being that way. I have been uh, working on uh, releasing my website all throughout 2020, and uh, the idea is that once I release the website, you know, there's going to be a Hire Me page where people uh, can uh, t take a look at my gallery of images and uh, they can hire me, essentially. And, and so that's something to look forward to eventually. But I I've been wanting to release my website with a coloring book, and I most of the year has been focused on working on this coloring book. And I just recently, within the last week, uh, talked to a lawyer about copyright law, and he said that it, it would cost $500, uh, $550, I think, and uh, he said it would would take six months for the copyright to be approved. That's 
great and all, but I, I, I plan on releasing my website sooner than six months from now. But in all actuality, it would take much longer than six months because um, <laughs> I just spent nearly every single penny I have on car repair. So what I'm thinking I'm going to be doing is I'm, I'm just going to have a, a store page that just says this page is under construction when I launch the website. And uh, so even though I, I have been working towards making it so that my website launches with my coloring book, uh, I guess that's not going to be the case. So that's that's a little bit of a disappointment right there. Really disappointing. As for my Patreon, uh, with me deciding that I'm going to be taking more of a proactive role uh, towards finding ways to make money online, uh, I guess I, I need to figure something out with Patreon because it's not doing so good. And uh, some of it's my fault, uh, like, I, or just generally a lack of understanding what the hell Patreon even is, but still trying to see what I can make with it to some extent. I was thinking like something kind of like a subscription model originally, um, but trying to keep up with monthly, some sort of monthly thing doesn't seem to really work out. Uh, right now, currently, I have it set up as like little tip jars that where people sign up to pay something monthly, like one to two to three to something dollars a month. That doesn't seem to be working out. And uh, I had three patrons and now I have uh, something more akin to like one. And uh, yeah, I, I've, I've kind of screwed that up and I, I need to figure out what the hell I'm, I'm doing with Patreon. Uh, I'm, o I'm open to suggestions. I've heard suggestions in the past, but just understand that some of this is just so new to me uh, and it's it's kind of like okay well i've heard these terms on the internet i've i've heard that these are platforms and stuff but i <sighs> me actually using them and utilizing them in an effective way is kind of a mystery and I don't know I, I, I honestly don't even know what to do with Patreon at this point but I do know that I want to do something more proactive with it but I don't know what because proactive sounds awesome and uh, that's the sort of thing that I <sighs> That's, that's a frustrating bit. I say that I, I'm, I need to be more proactive towards uh, figuring out how, how to make money online with my artwork, and yet I don't really know how. But if there is a more proactive way from somebody who happens to be in the know, then I'm then I'm open to su suggestions, I guess. Because, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to do with Patreon. One of the more interesting remarks someone made was, um, you know, release a vi your videos a day early. Uh, but I usually have the video finished by the time you guys watch it already. Like, there's no way that I could speed up and get the video done, you know, a day in advance to release it onto Patreon. And then someone else also said uh, something like, uh, well, how about you release, like, educational courses that people have to pay for on your Patreon? I don't really think that you should pay for information. I think information should be free. I mean, I've, I've promised all this educational stuff uh, for my YouTube channel, and I, the idea of having a paywall uh, and splitting my audience up and kind of, like, there, there are times where I've gone on to someone's channel, and uh, it seems like half of their content is on Patreon, and uh, the other half is on their channel. And what that makes me do is it makes me think, okay, this isn't somebody that I want to subscribe to at all, not even a little bit. In fact, I don't even want to pay attention to any of this person's content. That, that's what the paywall does. At least to me. That's what it does to me. So I, I don't want to split up my audience. Uh, and I, I don't want to make uh, newcomers question, well, what content does this person actually have that I have access to? And how much of it is secret under a paywall? And will I learn like part just just the first little introduction of an idea with the free content and then like he creates a paywall to the point to where oh great i know a little bit but not enough to actually do anything like i don't want people feeling like that with free content and then there's the paywall i because that's that's ultimately what i think whenever someone does something like that on patreon and like the thing is, is i don't really consider myself a salesperson I, i'm not a salesman i hate sales i mean i, I hate getting phone calls where people are trying
trying to sell me something. I, I hate salesmen. I, I hate them. The idea that I have to do sales in some way kind of pisses me off. And the idea of pushing it onto my subscribers, I hate the idea. Kind of a dog eat dog, rat eat rat world. I don't know. The guy who wound up pretty much stealing McDonald's from the original owners, he made a statement that if his worst enemy was drowning to death, he would just stick a garden hose in his mouth. I don't know. I, I would hope that I, I'm different. I, I would hope that I would be better than that. I mean, throughout the time that I've been here on YouTube, I've actually spent more money <laughs> than I've ever gained uh, investing in, you know, a, a better computer, recording equipment, software. Uh, I recently purchased the Zoom H6, which is a really high quality audio recording device. And uh, somewhat in the near future, I, I plan on doing something with it uh, for a video, uh, kind of sound hunting, hunting for sounds and possibly providing some of those sounds for free uh, to you guys. Uh, but not necessarily all of them, uh, because it'd be great if I could copyright them and sell them as a sound library on my website. But th that would probably be another copyright, another $550. And why it has to be so expensive. $550 is probably more than I'll ever get for the coloring book. More than I'll ever get for the sound library. I mean, I guess in a way, it's me investing in my future with passive income. But from where I'm sitting right here right now at this very moment in a state of desperation, needing money right now, it's really difficult to see it. But even still, I'm going to proactively go that route, looking for passive income opportunities. But the thing that I'm struggling with right now is finding Finding the work now and getting the money now. That's what I'm struggling with. And, and how do I find those opportunities and such like that? That's It's all kind of ethereal to me. It's not something that actually has any type of cohesiveness in my brain. If I were to be able to see that I could make enough money doing this, like doing artwork freelance, enough to, to quit my job and so that I could do this full time, where I was making enough money off of products or whatever to where I could do this full time, I'd do it in a heartbeat. It's just I can't I can't just quit my job until I, I I can actually see like job offers like several job offers right in front of me and I do the math and say oh okay okay this is uh, at least a little bit better than what I currently got going on for work right now so I guess you guys understand the sort of pickle that I'm in at least like I said my living conditions like the living environment itself uh, I don't have much air conditioning in here so during the summer I'm sweating so much I can't even think straight and in the winter I can barely move my fingers and I'm bundled up in blankets like every single one shivering it'd be great to live in a place where I, I actually had proper air conditioning and heating and such things have to change and I need I need to proactively figure out how to do that there's got to be professional like I, I know I have a few professional freelancers that watch my videos I need help I need help help like people see my content they see my pictures and such like that and they say hey wow how long have you been in the industry and I tell them I'm not I've been knocking on the door for years and yet for some reason I, I can't seem to get in I need to see that whatever it is that I transition into it's going to be a better situation than what I currently have and if I can't see that if it's just more sweatshop work then really I already have a sweatshop job right now I I don't need to replace it with another sweatshop job I, I don't know I'm, I'm used to just thinking like an employee just expecting that there's work around the horizon or either that or hunting for employers rather than looking for jobs it's it's easier to look for an employer than it is looking for a job I guess I don't know how to do it if you're an experienced freelancer with a good amount of success do you have any books that you would recommend like books that don't beat around the bush books that don't just skim over basic information but talk about the basic information and then delve right into the nitty-gritty bits what books are on this topic that can help because I, I have purchased some books but most of them just kind of do a rudimentary description of ways of making passive income oh great as if that does any good like a step-by-step -step guide or something for variously different approaches to, to making money online, I guess, with your artwork. I mean, I guess there's YouTube channels where uh, freelance artists, they give advice. A lot of the time, they seem like they be beat around the bush. And I guess it'd just be nice to find somebody who's got some sort of content out there, whether it's a book or a v series of videos or whatever, that doesn't just keep on beating around the bush. 
because ultimately I could spend my entire paycheck, every paycheck it seems like, on one book after another after another that's basically just talking about gibberish or never really getting anywhere. I shouldn't have to watch like 400 hours worth of content just to find one small nugget that I might be able to use. But I guess the first step that I, I have to ha have in order to go fully freelance and such like that is I just need to release my website, even though it's not going to be the release that I had planned. And maybe uh, go on to Reddit or something and job hunt out there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Anyways, guys, that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys would like to get more notifications from me, feel free to join my Discord. A link to my Discord is in the video description below. If you'd like to support this channel, you could purchase one of my t-shirts on my Teespring. A link to my Teespring is in the video description below. And if you've enjoyed this content and would like to see more, feel free to click on anything else that's appearing on the screen right now. Thank you very much for your time.